Happy lunch hour, gang. All right, rarely, if ever, are you going to hear me sing the praises of somebody in the mainstream media. This is going to be a little different, okay? Uh, we all know the, the propaganda arm of CNN, MSNBC, Fox, ABC, CBS, NPR, whoever the hell you want to talk about, only has one thing in mind, and that's to push a narrative. Not necessarily all the people that work there toe the line with them, okay? And if you stick around to the end of the video, you'll understand my point on this one. So I hope you do, okay? We all remember a few months ago when Tucker Carlson was unceremoniously fired from Fox. Why? Because he told the truth. God forbid that gets out from a news organization. Okay. You know, they're more worried about clicks and ads and uh, any sort of hyperbola that they can talk about, you know, to kind of skirt the issue. There was an interesting story I ran across this morning. Some of you may be familiar with who Catherine Herridge is. Okay. Catherine Herridge for a long time was at Fox News. Uh, matter of fact, she was an original when Fox News started back in the late 90s. She hired on at the very beginning, okay? Lately, she has been a uh, senior investigative reporter for CBS News, okay? So she went from Fox to CBS. Most of us would agree Fox, for the most part, has been right-wing. Most of us would agree CBS forever, okay, has been left-wing. So if she can work for both, probably means she falls somewhere in the middle, or as most people would call that, objective, well, there's an interesting story that's come out lately that apparently Catherine Herridge is facing jail time. Why? Because, God forbid, she wants, as a journalist, to exercise her First Amendment rights of freedom of the press and refuse to acknowledge a confidential source that she has for a story that she had written in 2017, okay? And this was all about uh, the U.S. government training Chinese troops in the United States. Now, of course, there's a lawsuit that's filed, and somebody is using evidence that this existed, and they subpoenaed Catherine Herridge to talk about this. And the judge, the Obama-appointed judge is ordering her to reveal her source. And as of this point, she's refusing. Okay. So it comes to my question of, are they squashing the truth? Right? Okay. You know, she put this story out. God knows nobody wants to hear the truth. Okay. Okay. So now you're going to have to start a witch hunt for the person who said, who told her about this story, so they can miraculously die by suicide of two bullets to the brain, you know, be arcancited. That's inevitably what we're looking at. But Catherine Herridge is standing her ground. Now I want to fast forward a little bit to what's going on right now, okay? With everything going on with Israel and Palestine and Hamas and Hezbollah and the whole creative crap that's going on in there. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, Schindler's List, Platoon, Full Metal Jacket, Apocalypse Now, Fury, Inglorious Bastards, Hacksaw Ridge, Hamburger Hill, The Hurt Locker, anything in a Rambo series, whatever? Ever seen any of those movies? When you watched the movie, did you throw up in your lap? It was pretty graphic violence, wasn't it? And you watched the movie and applauded and rooted for the good guy, and that was it. Why is it that it is so acceptable for Hollywood to show us movies like this, but God forbid the news show us real footage of what's going on in a war, okay? 
And somebody may say, oh, it's the privacy of the person that was killed or whatever. We don't want to put more trauma on the family. Those were just actors in a movie. This is, the, this is, you know, too much emotional distress on the family seeing what happened to them, right? Yeah, okay. So we have stories today coming out about the Israelis trying to identify the bodies, trying to identify the bodies of the people that were killed by Hamas. Okay. that were burned so bad that they can't even do dental tests on them. Okay, This is coming straight out of the Holocaust, guys. Okay, This is the same crap that you had going on back then. We've all seen the story on that one German girl who was at the concert the day that Hamas decided to raise hell. Okay, You know, her mother had uh, converted from Catholicism to Judaism. And so this girl was raised in Israel. She was a conscientious, conscientious objector. I mean, she was a pacifist. And so therefore she did not serve in the Israeli military. Hamas, of course, decided that she was an Israeli soldier. This is this is the girl, if you remember correctly, those quick videos we saw of the woman's body in the back of a pickup truck while these heathens were spitting on her, right? That was what we got to see. Got to see the back of her body and, you know, a brief two-second clip. Well, they've now identified at least part of her. They found her skull, okay? That's what we have. They beheaded her. Have we seen those videos? No. The Biden administration claims they've seen those videos. But of course, the public can't. Oh, it, it, it'll be too traumatic for the public, the American, the Canadian, the German, the French, the English, the Australian, the Italian, wherever. Too traumatic for them to see something like that. Yet you can watch all the aforementioned movies and see people blow up right in front of you, very graphically. Granted, it's not real, I'll give you that, okay? But, yeah, it looks pretty much the same in the real world, if not a little more grotesque. But nobody's throwing up in the movie theaters. So why do I say this? Why should we be shown these pictures? Because maybe all these Idiots who are running around New York City, running around college campuses, running around Chicago, protesting all over the place, saying how great the Palestinians are, maybe they should see exactly what these people they are supporting are doing to people. Maybe they should see what the real horrors of war look like. It ain't pretty, okay? But no, the media can't show it. The government won't tell us. You know, they need to push that narrative. They need to tell us, oh, 11 people died. They don't tell you that the person was dismembered at every joint, fingers, wrists, feet, ankles, knees, hips, whatever, beheaded and then burned. They don't tell you that. They just say somebody died. Most people, when they think of somebody dying, it's, well, they were laying peaceful in their bed and kind of fell asleep and didn't wake up. That's the picture they're trying to paint. They're not trying to paint the picture of somebody being brutally raped and then somebody sticking a rifle in their chest and or at their head and blowing their head off and laughing the whole way. Those are the videos that we need to see. Those are the pictures that we need to see. Try putting something like that on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Truth Social. You'd never see the video if I put put a picture like that in there because it would have, I'd be shut down so so fast it wouldn't be funny because it doesn't meet the narrative. You know, so many people taught, have family members that served in Vietnam. Very few left from Korea. Served in Vietnam, 
or served in Afghanistan or served in Iraq. And the comment I see more often is they don't talk about it. Because they don't want to have to relive those horrors of war. They know exactly what it looks like. They know what it's like to see somebody step on a landmine. They know what it's like to see their buddy right next to them, two feet away from them, get a bullet in the head. And they don't want to see it. They don't want to talk about it. But you know what? It's to the point where we need to scare some of these people straight and tell them these are the animals, the heathens, the barbarians that you are supporting. This is what they are doing to other human beings. And you sympathize with them. How? This is... Supporting, supporting Hamas is no different than supporting Charles Manson or John Wayne Gacy or Jeffrey Dahmer or pick one of them because Hamas does the exact same thing. And yet these idiot college kids who don't know how to tell time on an analog clock, can't tie their own shoes, and God forbid could have a conversation with somebody that didn't involve doing this, they want you to listen to them and go, the Palestinians are oppressed, it's apartheid, it's... A no. Israel gave them the Gaza Strip, that's Israeli country, guys, okay, and said, self-govern yourself as long as we maintain the peace, we're good. Could the Palestinians live with that? Nope. They, they are pre-programmed genetically to hate, to kill, to rape, to murder. This is all they know. I mean, they have not evolved past about 600 A.D., but we need to see that. We need our media, our government, to release those videos, those pictures, to not censor people that want to post them. So that all these little soy boys, Karens, and little girls that want to dress up as boys and voice, vice versa can see what they actually support. Because what they actually support is eventually coming here. And you know, every one of them is going to cower in the corner and go, Oh my God, what do I do now? Reminds me of an old commercial from the 80s. You asked for it, you got it. No, and I ain't saying buy a Toyota. And we'll have